Hello, and welcome to my HTML tutorial series. This will be the first stop in my web development arc, which will, with any luck, teach you how to be a web developer, which is, of course, an invaluable skill to have in our largely technology-based world, because the ability to make an actual web page or website means that you can communicate any design or idea or premise to basically everyone in the world. And the first step to actually being able to do that is, of course, learning how to program in HTML, which is what websites use to actually create and organize things in your web browser. So the first thing you're going to need is a text editor, which you could easily use something like TextEdit or Notepad++ or WordPad. However, my preference when I'm working with singular things is to use Sublime Text. And I actually use Sublime Text 2. Well, no, I use Sublime Text 3, sorry. But uh, the good thing about Sublime Text is that it can do syntax highlighting and compilation for a, uh, as you can see, a ridiculous amount of languages. And of course, you can even download more if you're not into that. So I'm basically going to just pick out HTML. Though if I save this as an HTML file, it would instantly recognize the syntax. But here, I'm just going to open it like this. So the I know we're just going to jump right into this because HTML is actually really simple. It just has a lot of components that you have to remember and work with. But HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. So by markup language, it means it's a fancy way to just display things in normal text. So it's not a programming language by any means. It's a way to organize things and display things. Think of being able to display things like you would in Microsoft Word or in Google Docs, except you had to program, well, not program, but actually write it all out in this markup language. So how it does that is use, it uses several elements, and elements are basically any title in between these angle brackets. So how you would, uh, you would put everything that you're going to put in your HTML document in an HTML tag. And well, as you can see, Sublime actually uh, filled in all of that for me, but let's take it uh, step by step. So basically you start with the actual HTML tag. So how these elements actually work is that, again, they're contained within these angle brackets, and their actual title is just that. And they actually contain something between them. This one, this is the opening element, and this is the closing tag opening tag and closing tag and it's the HTML element and this is closing because it has this forward slash right there inside the angle brackets but right before the name of the tag right before the tag name so everything of sustenance that you're going to be putting in your web page is going to be between the HTML tags and then for standard convention what you also want to do the first line in your file will be an opening bracket and then an exclamation point and that exclamation point after the bracket actually makes it special. It lets it know that it's not actually an element or a tag. But what we're going to specify here is doc type HTML. And this is just handy. So like any browser or any other program reading this knows for certain that this is definitely uh, HTML specification. And it's just standard convention. It's like putting a shebang on the beginning of a shell script, a Ruby script, or a Python script, or anything, which uh, you can learn about in a tutorial about those respective languages, but I digress. So inside the HTML element, you're going to want two things. You want a head, which again, Sublime is being handy enough to actually complete some of this stuff for me, and a body. And basically, this layout right here is what you're going to have in every single HTML file that you're ever going to have. You're going to hopefully have this doc type. You're going to have to have the HTML elements, the HTML element with opening and closing tags, the head element with opening and closing tags, and the body element with opening and closing tags. Basically, the point of having an opening and closing tag is that so this document knows that everything you put in between those is going to be a part of the head. So how it, it's how it actually contains things. So indentation is not necessary at all. So you could easily put everything on the same line and it still works. But, I mean, I indent things, so if I'm ever going through this file, it's very easy to see what things are inside of which tags. Some people don't indent this right here, but I always conform to my own indentation specification. So basically, inside this head 
element will be uh, information about the page. It isn't actually going to be any page content, but this is where you're going to like specify a page title, maybe do some meta tags, which basically just describe some stuff about your page, and it's where you're going to link your resources. So this so this is where you'll import some other files, which you'll learn about, or at least I'll talk about in non-HTML tutorials, since you don't really use them when you're using just straight HTML. But right now, when what you want on every page is in your head is pretty much just the title tag so obviously opening it you want to open and close it and inside of it you're going to want to put the actual title of your page and by title of the page this is exactly what's it what is it sorry this is exactly what it's going to show in your browser on the tab so if I if I simply save this somewhere of course so test.html and to open an actual HTML file and view it you just have to navigate to it in your handy file explorer and you can right click and open with you can basically open it with any one any you know your favorite web browser be it chrome or firefox or safari or opera or netscape or midori or anything or you can just double click it and it'll probably just do it right automatically i can drag it over here so as you can see in the title tag it it's just opening this file instead of a web address instead of http at the beginning it's file but as you can see the actual title of the tab is test page and we set that, of course, just using this title element. So that's all you're really going to do when you're programming in just pure HTML, besides some meta tags later on. But again, inside the body is going to be ex just what you put in it. So we can just type something. The simplest thing you can do is just type something. So this is a test page. And of course, we can save that. And what we can actually do is then pull this window over here again and you can just refresh it to update it so again this is a test page exactly what it is so the browser is already opening it and handling everything of course we didn't actually add a lot for it to handle yet but we can add that so HTML, so obviously html has a certain library of tags that exist so obviously html is a tag heads a tag titles a tag body is a tag it has several other ones as well that we can find useful and of course all tags are going to be within these angle brackets so one of these is an h1 tag and there's actually also h2 h3 h4 h5 and all the way up to h6 there is unfortunately no h7 but what these are the the h stands for headers and basically one is the biggest two is a little smaller three etc 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 and they basically what headings do is it basically makes the text bigger it gives it some margins and everything so it isn't crowded at all but it's basically a way to display you know a section that you have on your website so this is a big header you can close it just to exhibit the different behaviors we can show all of them so headers one, two, one through six just formatting it so it's very clear on the actual page giant <laughs> three four five and six and we can save that and again bring over your favorite web browser and you can just refresh and you can see it's a lot bigger than just the normal text and six is actually a little smaller than the normal text but they're all bold and obviously you can see they're a lot bigger and more pronounced than just what you would normally put on the page. So this is an H1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and all the way down to 6. So obviously you can use a big header for actually declaring a very um, important section to draw the reader's attention, and of course every header down from that is just a little less important on the scale. And then if you're just displaying normal text, you can just use a P tag. And P just it stands for paragraph. So in here you can say this is normal text. 
inside of a paragraph tag or element rather so we can just refresh that say this is normal text inside a paragraph element and it obviously formats and everything so that's a normal font size and everything not too big not too small pretty normal so we can take this hollow blue now that you know about headers and another thing to note about HTML it being a markup language is that obviously on this page you don't see these tags in the text you only see what's actually contained in these tags so what's also important to note is that I mean obviously there's a lot of more stuff there's more stuff in between these tags than just you know that text There's a line feed right here there's three tabs right there and there's a line feed right there and two tabs right there just in between these two paragraphs and that's where HTML exhibits one of its properties and that is um, white space uh, it basically ignores ba uh, most of the white space like if I put five uh, well a whole bunch of spaces right there and we save it and we refresh this there isn't there, there's still one space in between this and is because white space just cuts off most uh, sorry HTML cuts off most of the white space so that means if you're if you want to have certain formatting in your HTML file uh, it'll just completely ignore that the actual element it'll be as if they're all just normal spaces so if you want to format your text in your actual HTML file in a certain way so it's more easy for you to read then you can easily do that do line feeds or more tabs to make sure everything's separate and everything and then you can just save it and refresh this and it's exactly the same so while it's displaying to the user with the uh, let with obviously not all the formatting you did in your file just as if it was a normal sentence obviously you have something very different in your HTML file and that's just useful to whoever's looking at the HTML file but since this is a very short paragraph tag you can easily just put everything in one line and you can even make the paragraph tag itself all on one line just so everything's more compact and easier to look at in essence so HTML provides an amazing library I mean basically it's a library it's really a namespace of a whole bunch of different elements you can use and this has been being used for a uh, such a long while to actually you know make things on web pages uh, just standalone HTML because nowadays there are other things you can build into web pages such as CSS which is cascading style seats in JavaScript which is a programming language you can use to implement interactivity on your website and while I won't be covering those in this tutorial, I will make other tutorials to teach you about all that stuff. But until then, this tutorial is all about getting used to HTML in general. So one thing you might want to do on your website is link to something. And in order to make a link on a website, you use what's called an anchor tag. But much like P, it's only one letter. So just an A. And A stands for anchor. And it basically anchors this resource here. So in order to actually link it right now if we just put text here let's just let's say this is a link to Google we can easily just put this over here refresh the page and this is a link to Google obviously I can't click on it it's not even blue or underlined or highlighted it's just normal text right now in order to actually give it that link property you need an href which I believe stands for hyper reference because you're hyperlinking to a certain website so while so important here is to realize the syntax of this HTML tag. So A is the tag name, and that's the actual element. All of this is inside the A or anchor element. But each tag can have extra attributes to it. You can call <laughs> they are basically attributes mainly because they are actually called attributes. So this A element, this A tag, has an href attribute and there are several other attributes you can put on it but um, most of those are mainly tag dependent like on a P you normally wouldn't put any other any other attributes except for like style or on click or something but uh, again we won't be covering that in this tutorial because uh, style would actually you would implement CSS to make things look different or on click would be JavaScript but again this is all HTML so this hyper reference we're actually gonna fill with a link of course we're gonna say this links 
to google.com. So what happens? The browser says, okay, so this text is in this anchor tag, so first it's going to style it so it looks like a link. And then it's going to say, okay, if someone clicks on it, we're going to redirect them to a page that is specified in href. So in this situation, obviously, that will be google.com. So if we refresh it, there's an href. You can see it's blue, it's underlined, and when you hover over it, your mouse looks like a pointer. We can click on it, and I forgot to make the link reference. Uh, I forgot to make the link attribute. Uh, sorry. Uh, I forgot to make the link relative. So obviously, it tried to go to google.com in our actual in in the folder that I'm currently in as if it's a relative link relative to where this file is so what we actually need to do is specify the protocol which will be HTTP www. I mean www isn't the protocol HTTP is the important part so now we just go back and refresh and click on it as you can see if you look down here when I hover over the link it's gonna tell you where it's gonna go and it's gonna go to HTTP colon slash slash www.google.com and of course this works perfectly so now we're google.com but of course we can just press the back button and go back to our personal little site now you may be thinking maybe it looks a little weird that uh... i mean this link is all by itself however we can easily make this an inline element because an anchor tag is actually a type of inline element so we could obviously make this text a little this uh, paragraph text a little more contextual and say if you want to search something on the internet you should use Google however we don't want Google to just be normal text we actually want that thing right there to link to Google so we can take is we can take this anchor tag and put it right there opening and closing around it so right now we have an anchor tag inside we have an anchor element inside the paragraph element so we can get rid of that and if we actually refresh the page right here we see it's all in line if you want to search on the internet you should use google and of course this is stuck colored and underlined and you can has a pointer when you hover over it so obviously to link you can click on it and it redirects you to google.com and that is all in line. And of course, you can put any href here you want. And again, like I said, it was relative. We can create a separate HTML file and call it link.html. Save it in the same directory. Have this generate all that for me, which is handy, except I want to indent it. And we can basically say and this is basically just going to be a receiving page that we're going to have over here so what we're going to do is say if you want to create a new line in a paragraph you can simply use BR which stands for break and that's is instead of condensing all of the white space like it normally would like if we just keep doing that it's not going to show all those new lines but break is an is an html html element which will actually insert that new line so we can do break if you want to see your other page click here and of course we're going to link here or click here rather mainly because we want to and because we can anchor we're going to say href equals link HTML and of course close the quote close the opening tag and then put a closing tag and then just for convenience we're also going to put over here if you want to go back click here and of course right here we're gonna have another anchor element and this time we're gonna link to test.html right back to where we probably came from so we're going to save that. We can easily go here. So as you can see, the BR element we put in the file right here, break, it did a new line. So obviously all this text is on a different line. So we can click here to go this, and it says, welcome to the link page. If you want to go back, click here, just as we specified in the HTML. 
So obviously, this is a big header. But that is the ba those are the basics of HTML, at least the syntax. So you realize uh, the basic outline of the page is the HTML with the head and the title and the body. And you can put anything you want in the body, especially these tags. And of course, there's a huge library of tags you can use in Elements. Of course, there's the top level header. We had a little bit of a smaller header on the other, pa other page right here. A little bit of a size difference. And of course, paragraphs. And now you can link to different pages as well using the anchor tag in href. And you create new, and you can create breaks to actually uh, go to different pages. And another thing, not only can you insert new lines with an HTML element, but you can also insert other characters. Like, obviously, if you want an angle bracket, you can say, we'll put another break here, and we'll say, okay, 5 is, is less than 10. And you can't say that, because if we, like, save this and try to redo this, it's actually it actually puts it in there which is act which is actually kind of bad because not all brow your browser might yell at you for doing that it shouldn't actually do that because obviously you can see the editor is like hey we're expecting an opening tag here and it's not getting one so it's actually really confused if we actually close that yeah it still has that but it's expecting a tag right here so if we actually wanted to format something like um we can, what if we wanted to say h1 is an HTML element? So obviously if you put that in, we didn't even close the tag. You always want to close your tag. But this is displaying as a header, and all we want to actually say is actually we want to print h1 onto the page. So how we can do that, if you want to print HTML control characters, like the angle bracket, you have to use a certain format. And that format begins with an ampersand, and then the character code and this is a less than angle bracket so it's actually just LT less than and then you end it with a semicolon so start it with an ampersand put the character code in and then end it with a semicolon so we can do less than and then we can do the same thing for greater than and as you can see the te my text editor sublime text easily lets you know with a different color and text format that hey those are special characters we're not actually going to see ampersand lt semicolon we're going to see a less than angle bracket so if we refresh we see that h1 is an html element exactly what we were going to expect and then you can also say okay five is less than ten which is a correct way to put it instead of actually putting that angle bracket there so if you wanted to format this text a little bit, there's another special character you can use. So let's say you wanted to indent it with five spaces. So obviously if we do that right there, this isn't going to display that at all because it n removes all of the extra white space. But we, what we can do is use the other special character. So of course start it with an ampersand or an and symbol. And it's going to be NBSP. And that stands for non-breaking space. So five of these should be five spaces. And I normally put these on the previous line and put that right there. So now our text should be indented with five non-breaking spaces. And there you go. One, two, three, four, five non-breaking spaces. Or <laughs> spaces, if you will. So that's a simple way to format it. And of course, we also have the other inline tags. And there's a huge other um, list of other tags you can use, like tables and lists, both ordered and unordered and unordered and frames and divs and um, a ridiculous and forms and inputs and videos and you can even put audio and other stuff in your page and images of course so there's a ridiculous amount you can do with HTML in terms of formatting and putting things on your web page but we'll talk about that in the next episode which will mainly just going over a whole bunch of different elements and exactly what you can do with them and how you format them and other regular things but now you have basic knowledge to say hey if you want to make a basic web page on your computer that really only you can look at you can make you can uh, practice your basic web development skills using just HTML but thank you very much for watching and have fun with your basic knowledge of HTML